I'll tell you what, networking is a cool thing. A couple years ago, we were fishing an AIM event, and we met a guy who was emceeing the tournament called Jason Goldshear. Well, Jason wanted us to come up to Lake Winnipeg and do some ice fishing. So Jason introduced us to his friends, who introduced us to some other friends, and we got to go out now today with Lee Nolden. And Lee knows this lake very, very well, and that's important because Lake Winnipeg is huge. And between the four of us, we're gonna try and go out in Lake Winnipeg, find out some active pods of fish, try and hog call in some big ones. I got Jim Hudson, our next bite resident ice fishing expert with us. And I got our TV producer, Dustin Hoy, to come out and try and find these fish. And I tell you what, we're gonna do some jigging, we're gonna do some hog calling, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get the next bite. The largest lake within the borders of Southern Canada, Lake Winnipeg is a sprawling yet relatively shallow body of water. A remnant of a prehistoric glacial lake, it is a perfect setting for the big tools, loud lures, and even some sweet toys that will be used to seek out the big green walleyes that lurk beneath the lake's currently four foot thick icy hide. Uh, here's the I got one. Is it a good one? Hurry up, Jim. He's almost up. <laughs> Feels like a good one. Well, I don't, I don't know if he's a walleye or not. He's putting a lot of water in the hole, but here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> I would have sworn that wasn't a walleye. Here you go. Look at that thing. Look at how thick they are, Keith. It's a beautiful thing. But I mean, look at how he ate that frenzy, a Berkeley frenzy there. He just smashed it. Yeah. Oh, he was just flooding the hole with his head shakes. <laughs> Man, what a nice looking fish. God, the green just... back up here. Very, very nice. He ate that. He ate <laughs> yummy, yummy. He goes, this is a good. <laughs> well, let me get him back in the hole here, Jim. Yep. There he goes. Let him grow up even bigger. Ooh, he's just a slip slider there. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> You hear it all the time that you should be mobile when you're out ice fishing. What we're fishing here is basically a big flat. It's a big basin area. There's no structure, there's no rock, there's no shoreline breaks or anything. And what's happening is, is that the fish cruise around on this in pods. Now what we're running into here is, is that the pods are fairly small. They might only have 20, 30 fish in them. And in between the pods, there might be scattered fish all over. So what we're trying to do is move and move and move and move, trying to land on one of these pods. I would say almost all of our fish are caught with within the first 15 minutes of when we're on a spot. We draw them in, we catch whatever's there, and then we have to move. The other weird thing about pods is they don't sit in one place. You can't GPS mark them and just go back to that spot again because that pod can move around. So you got a moving target, you got fairly small pods out here, but the good thing is there's tons of fish. So if you move enough, you keep mobile, and you keep those baits in the water, you're gonna catch fish here on Lake Winnipeg or any place you find these open water basin fish. In addition to staying mobile to seek out these smaller pods of walleyes. Everyone's using real-time LCD fish finders to nail down more specific details like jigging cadences. Here, hog, 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 hog. Are you hog calling in there, Keith? Here, hog, 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 hog. However, Keith and Lee decide to pull some double duty by trying to stay more at the head of the school, keeping an eye on its general direction so we stay on fish. Well, hard to see him through a slush. There he comes. Ooh, that's a nice one. And conserving not only the gas for the drill, but our backs as well. That's one thing that works good is when you come out and scout in front of us to find these fish and then bring us here while we're in other spots catching fish and then we keep on going to the better spot. To most seasoned ice fishermen like Keith Cavallas, Jim Hudson, or Lee Nolan, some of the things involved with their techniques are second nature already. Lift up some more. Oh. Lift up some more. But this was my first time out on the ice, and I quickly became very focused on the part of the overall crash course that involved keeping these walleyes interested in my lure as they came in for a look on the graph. I was watching you play with him on the electronics, and I, you know, you see him coming up. How are you getting him, triggering him like that? Once you see him start to follow your lure like that. Well, the best thing we like is when they just come and crush it, kind of like what we had in the morning. But now here in the afternoon, we do have to work them a little bit. I'll let this one go quick. And I'll just kind of drop my lure down and, and show you what's going on here. So basically, I've been going down to the bottom. Right. To get them to come in, I'm holding my jig about a foot off the bottom, ripping it and coming down and hitting bottom. And I see the fish come in, and if it doesn't hit right away, 
and Mark's coming up to it slowly, all I do is I play a cat and mouse type of game. Okay. Just keep on slowly rising it away, rising it away, and usually that it'll trigger that fish. It's an instinct type thing where the fish comes up underneath it quick, the bait fish is fleeing away, and you feel the bite. So you keep the lure moving the whole time. I mean, exactly. Besides the hold part. Well, even when I'm holding it, I'm, I'm shaking it. I'm shaking, you know, the treble hook because if we have it's a gulp on it or say a minnow head, I want that part of the bait moving as I'm bringing it up because that's what that fish is keyed in on. So when the mark comes up and then maybe sometimes it, it starts to go away, you just, do you follow it back down with the lure? Is yep, I, I go I go quickly right back to the bottom. I hit the bottom and I come past the fish again, usually a reaction bite again. It'll come up and grab the lure. The next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, never stop.